Welcome in, everyone. This is the Flow Track Podcast. I am Kevin. He is Gordon. Gordon, are you raising your seat there a bit? You want to make yourself a oh, caller sorry. for the audience? No, I don't know. No, no, are you? My head. Oh, no. wait. Gordon's here. Should I? I'm here. No, definitely. You started this podcast off. Side of the, screen. the audio version of this podcast just... is going to be awful because everyone's like, what are you guys talking about? Well, right, go. we go a lot. We have 30 minutes to prep, and then you decide right as I start talking that you're going to like move your seat or like adjust the camera. So I'm just looking out for producer Cole, who tries to frame us up and make us look good. And then at the last minute, you you pull, pull some shenanigans. And anyway, in any event, um, <laughs> uh, thanks for watching live on YouTube. The email address, again, flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com. We're going to talk about a couple topics that we touched on during our Friday live Lausanne reaction pod that we didn't go fully into depth on, went more into depth than I would have liked. And that is the the schedule that got released for Budapest 2023. And we're also going to talk about the updated Diamond League standings with one meet left before the Diamond League final. Talk about some fun potential uh, scenarios that could arise, some opportunities for some certain athletes, and the missing presence of a couple athletes that could loom large in the Diamond League. Final. Before we get into that, though, going you're deep in the middle of NCAA cross country rankings. I know people like to know about your process, where you're at, how late you're staying up. What's the status of these cross country rankings? So the status is still pending. The goal, I'm going to be honest, the goal was to have the rankings out today, August 29th, Uh-oh. because this upcoming weekend is the first weekend of competition. You got, you know, people running out just doing 5K time trials and where their 12th best runner is beating their number two runner because everyone just jogs as a group and you can't take anything mm-hmm. from it. But uh, that's this weekend. So the goal was to have the rankings out today. That's not happening. Sorry. I got a little... Normally, I would do some stuff on the weekends, but my weekends have been fuller lately. So I'm, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to have to work during the regular hours of 9 to 5. I'm learning that about myself. Uh, so the, the rankings are going to come mm. out probably by Wednesday, Thursday. So this week, they're going to come out this week. They're going to be out before the first races, which will be on Friday. So the official top 255 athletes mm-hmm. in the country, both men and women, will be ranked in order. We'll have the top 30 teams or top 25 teams. And uh, you guys can come debate debate that. And Kevin, you have been instrumental in helping me generate these rankings. For the mm-hmm. first time in your five years at FlowTrack, you finally yep. are contributing to <laughs> the cross country season. And I really appreciate it. I, His five I, years I like of watching cross country, right? The five years yeah. he's watched cross country. <laughs> no, at least a decade. For me. A decade. Oh, okay. Um, I like the backhand compliment. Yeah, you're having me. Or I volunteered, emailed certain coaches to get updates on rosters. Now I'm a little nervous though, because you say you're going to get this out on Wednesday. I still have about 40 emails to go. You still want me to send those? I still want you to send those. I'm working okay. while you're sending. It's like it's a process. It's like you're cool. like kind of meet halfway and then keep going like this. That's yeah. Yeah. You keep basically sending. for people for people who want to know, there was a status of about 500 athletes that you wanted to know about, whether or not they're running, whether or not they graduated, whether or not they transferred. So emailed all the coaches of those athletes. Now some teams have like five or six people you're curious about. So it's not 500 emails, but it's a lot of emails, folks. I've never had this many emails in my inbox. It kind of freaks me out. I leave to go for a run. I come back. I got 27 emails. Like I'm not a 27 email guy. Do I look like a 27 email guy? For those of you watching on no. YouTube? No, I don't look like a 27 email guy. So... I've been plugging away, um, and I'll get them all sent today because I'm, I'm about 45 to go. So I'll be able to send 45. And then it's just a matter of who gets back to me in time because then I have to update it with the information that they give. And then you take that information and create a ranking that we're both proud of. Yes. And uh, they're going to be good. I mean, I'm looking at them. I'm starting to get an idea of, you know, Teams that are going to be in the mix, not in the mix. There are some new teams that will be the you know top ten caliber that typically aren't top ten, which is always exciting. The teams that we typically think are top ten who are dog shit this year, and they will not be ranked top ten. So, um, 
it's going to be uh, an interesting season. I'm excited. I think we all know who the favorites are. Uh, spoiler alert. They both start with the letter N. NC mm. State and Northern Arizona. I'm pretty sure those are going to end up being the top two ranked teams in both the women's and men's side. Uh, but it's going to be... I'm excited to, for the individual stuff is pretty interesting. Like, I was looking at this. Sorry, we might just turn to a cross-country podcast. But No, it's I'm not. Up, I'm going to tell you it's not. I'm going to bring up the uh, 2021 NCA XC results. Um, so, the men's NCA XC. First place finisher, Connor Mance. Pro. Second, Wesley Kiptu. Pro. Third, Ithanis Kyoko. Graduated. Fourth, Charles Hicks. He's back. Fifth, Morgan yeah. Bealscum. Gone. Pro. Sixth, Adrian Wildshut. Wildshut. Gone. Pro. Seventh, Abdi Hamanur. Gone. Pro. Eighth, ninth, and tenth, Casey Klinger, Haftu, Strintzos, and Dylan Jacobs. They're all back. So only four of the top ten return. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like that, you know, leaves it up for, like, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, Nico Young is there in 11th returner. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, a mm-hmm. lot of new names are going to be all of a sudden winning races. There's no more Kip 2s. There's no more Wild Shuts, Connor Mance's. I mean, no Connor Mance. Do you remember that, uh, the pre, pre-Connor Mance era of NCAA cross country? I feel like he's been in NCAA cross country for years. My first full cross country season working here, which whatever was five years ago, was the, the emergence of Connor Mance because he was back from his mission, and that was when he was like running like a man on fire. And then Rory Linklater gave that interview or had, had made that comment or whatever. He's like, he's got two speeds, balls out and balls to the wall or something like that. Was that, uh, yeah, that was pre, I think it was such a pre natch. Yeah, yeah, so I was like 2018. Now, yeah. yeah, and he ran, so he had, I think he had run a season though before his mission, right? So, I mean, th- that even, th- th- there was NCAA cross before I even got here. So, to answer your question, no, uh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> the early Connor yeah. Mance years are a long time ago. So, yeah, he's been a fixture for, for a good long while. So, all right, we're excited about that. Uh, James, who's a member in the chat, says, watch out for. Tim Sinewick, a freshman at Oklahoma State, he broke the high school marathon record this past swing, spring, 22251 as an 18 year old. Who's this guy? Uh oh, Gordon, update the rankings. Oh, Tim Sinewick. Where is this guy? Uh oh. Uh oh, just made more work for Gordon. Yeah, I'm going to go. not on his radar. Yeah. Yeah, this is. Did, uh, well, you, you emailed um, Dave Smith, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Did I'll he say anything about this guy to you? I need to go back and look. I have so many emails in my inbox, and they're all blurring together. But I can forward that one to you. I will certainly get back to you on that one. All right. Do you want to start first with the schedule release? I mean, this is the most exciting podcast of all podcasts. We're talking about well, a I'm going to make it exciting. I'm going to make it exciting. Schedules are important. Listen, if you don't if have a schedule, NBA does knows it, when anything is. The NFL does yeah. it. So we can do it, too. This is our moment. This is our moment. Also. I, I started studying last night for that game that we're going to play this week. You said Monday, but I'm assuming you're not ready because oh, I didn't do any you, studying. I was busy. Yeah. You're at the mall getting a pretzel and a lemonade, but I'm starting to work through it. I'm creating mnemonic devices in my head to remember, but I wrote down, let's see, I got three things that I like about the schedule and I have three things I don't like about the schedule. And then one thing I'm like, eh, about that I don't think will ultimately matter. Uh, which would you like first? Let's do the three things you like about the schedule. All right. Number one, no morning running event finals. So if you look at the schedule up here, the, the finals are in gold. So there's day one right there, top left. You have the race walk, day two, race walk. You scroll down through those morning sessions. We do not have any morning running event finals. We didn't have a ton in Eugene, right? We had that 10,000 that was in the morning. But the Olympics in the past, there's been morning running event finals that aren't on the roads. I just don't, I don't know about you. I'm just not a fan of it. Um, Tokyo, remember? McLaughlin 
uh, and Morholm, like their big moments. It was more, it was prime time in the U.S., so it worked out well for us. But there's just something strange about them running these all-time races when the sun is like right overhead. It's just yeah. like kind of strange. Like I, I like the atmosphere, I like the ambiance of of the evening finals. So for me, that was a plus uh, of no morning finals. I don't know. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I mean, I I also don't like it. it just you don't want the vibe of just like 1 p.m. celebration. It's just not as as true as like an eight o'clock, yeah. nine o'clock celebration. So I agree with that. Okay. I, I didn't notice that at first, but the fact that you point that out, it's a good little. We need. I mean, I think we need to get rid of all morning sessions. I think what's the point of having a morning session in general? Just, but that's for another conversation. Mm-hmm. But, if we get rid of the finals, that's a good starting point. The other part of it, too, is whether you're not going to have to deal with, oh, man, that 1 p.m. or that noon 10K final is going to be really hot. Now, some places throughout the world, you're going to have warm temperatures in the, in the evening or afternoon, too. But in general, I think where they run into trouble is when they do those afternoon distance races. All right. Thing two, somewhat related, and you'll like this, it's down to nine days. It was 10 days before, been 10 days for a while. It is only nine days this time. It starts on a Saturday, I believe, instead of starting on a Friday. Kind of interesting in terms of trying to put in primetime windows because then that what that does is that pushes that women's 100 to day three, which is on a Monday now. Because ordinarily you have day one, is one or two finals, but it's not the hundred final, right? Day two is the, either the men's or women's final, and then day three is whatever didn't go on day two. So now you're pushing that to a Monday. But in general, I like nine days. I think both for fans in the stands and fans at home, it's better to pack more stuff in, be a little bit more efficient with it. You get more bang for your buck if you're shelling out money and going to these meets to see a bunch more finals, just not dra- There was one day, remember, I don't know which one it was now, in Eugene, where it was basically like two, two finals total. That whole, It was like discus and steeple or something one night. You, you, can't, you throw uh, everything into nine days. Do, do you like nine days as opposed to 10? Yeah, I mean, I would like it to be four days, but that's just me. Like, I think you can do it in four. So, I mean, they do the NCAA championships in four. No one's... That, that, we don't need a nine-day NCAA championships. I don't know why we need a nine-day world championships. Like top 24, every event, boom, done. Well, um, there's where your issue. They're not taking 24 in every event. So they're doing a 10K. Therein lies the problem. But they that's do the, most of the yes. field events. They do most in the field yeah. events. It's possible. Yeah, I wasn't trying to rework the schedule, Gordon. I was trying to just build off of what we have here okay. and, and give you the, well, the good stuff. Okay. Let's hope that next year, you know, you know, I guess the Olympics won't count, but 2025, they make it an eight-day schedule. Then 2027, they make it a seven-day <laughs> schedule. And they just keep on working their way down to get to the four. It's the elimination mile, except yeah. with world championship dates. Subco exactly. says, by the time I retire from this position, it's going to be a weekend. That's it. And then I'm going to get away. The other thing is just a point of personal preference for me. They did, they did 10,000s first, then 5,000s. So the women's 10,000 is on day one. And then the men's 10,000 is on uh, day two. And then you get to the fives in the back half of the meet. I just, I like it better when it goes tens and then fives. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just habit going forward. Also, this is somewhat related to that. The day one is just a lot better than it was this past year. Because day one this past year, it was just the mixed four by four. Now you have another final there with the women's 10,000. And I, I just thought with all the debates about, ticket sales and stuff, and especially on day one. When I think, was day one, did day one end up being the worst attended day of the entire championships in Eugene? I think it did. And anecdotally, it, it looked the most empty. Well, from the night sessions, because I remember a lot of night sessions after that point where it was pretty packed. In any event, you didn't blame people because track fans are smart, they're savvy, they're looking at the schedule, and they're like, I can go to only X amount of days on my budget. Why would I go to one where there's only one final and it's the mixed four by four? This way, you have that that 10,000 at least holding it down as well as the men's shot that night which has been one of the most exciting events around so i like the day one construction and i like 10 and then five do you have a preference 10 and then five five and then 10 or you don't care i don't care 
I don't like it though when the only thing I don't like is when there are 10 five doublers who don't truly double. Like they aren't really going all in on one. Like they they're in both, but they don't really go all in in both. I always would wish there was an opportunity for a person who would go all in and like if you know you're not I don't like people using doubles as backup plans at world championships. Either you're doubling or you're not. No like, oh, just in case this doesn't go well, I have – see what's left in my legs for the second of ace. Yeah. Well, that's more common at U.S. champs, right? Yeah. Because it's just hard. It's hard to make the team, so you're dealing with a, yeah. a small group of people. Okay, here's what I don't like. Well, why do you do meh? Oh, you want meh? Okay, yeah. meh. What's so who who's the, and I know Jakob talked about tripling, which is crazy. He wants to do the Hassanathon. That's obviously going to be tough with where, where the fifteen and and the the ten are placed. So I'm going to put that I'm going to put that aside because I'm all for accommodating logical doubles. But when you start talking about accommodating triples, it just that gets to be difficult with the, with the current schedule. So I don't blame World Athletics. We're putting together their schedule that's not going to make a triple work. But in terms of doubles, what's the most anticipated double that we want to see next year? 400, 400 hurdles. Cindy McLaughlin. With, yeah. So this is how it would shake out given the schedule. Day two in the morning, 400 first round. Day three at night at 650, 400 hurdle first round. Then a couple hours later, she'd run the 400 semis. Day four, in the evening, she'd run the 400 hurdle semis. Day five in the evening, she'd run the 400 final. Day six, she'd run the 400 hurdle final. So she'd go two, three, four. She'd go two, two races on three, then one on four, five, and six. So she'd have to compete one, two, three, four, five days in a row. The reason I am mad on this is I don't think this rules out a double. I think McLaughlin is more than capable of running a 400 hurdle first round at 6.50 p.m. and then at 9, 10 p.m. running the 400 semis. I think where the issue comes in is just, first of all, does she want to do it, number one, which there's no guarantee that she wants to do those, those two. She's talked about how she wants to try new things, push the boundaries of the sport, what's possible, but we haven't heard her say and circle it and say, these are the two events I want to do in 2023. Also, people, they tend to focus in on the day when there's when you're doubling when you have to do two things and oftentimes i don't think it's that day that's the problem because in this case it's a first round and a semi it's more the cumulative toll of it it's okay how do you feel uh, on day six on your last final when you have all these other races in your legs now could they have made this a little bit easier for her yeah over a nine day meet you could have made it so you didn't have her run a first round and a semi a couple hours apart. And that's why I'm kind of mad on it. I wish they would have just cleared it out to made it, made it even more straightforward. But on the flip side of things, she's a good enough athlete to where she can, she can still do this, especially if Miller Weibo isn't running the 400. Yeah. I mean, she could still do it, but it's like, do you want to do it? But maybe she just, maybe her idea of next phase is not doubling, but just, Going all in on the 400 and trying to dominate that event the way she dominated the 400 hurdles. Like, yeah. So, yeah. but she wouldn't need to run that fast in these 400 hurdle prelims or even. That's so my point. Like, That's my point. Yeah. You can run 50 seconds and she has to go out there and run like 56 to qualify. That's going to feel very yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah. And then come back in the 400 semis and run, run a 50, 50 low. low. 50, yeah, sorry, 50, 51 low. I guess 50 high to be safe. She would yeah. be fine. I think what's interesting, and again, going back to my point about it's a cumulative toll, you can simulate doing two hard efforts two hours apart at practice or 90 minutes apart at practice. Like That's something you can do. It's harder to simulate in your training five days in a row of having yeah. to race with varying degrees of effort. Now, maybe... Bobby Kersey is like ahead of the curve and, and does these sort of simulated activities. Maybe coaches are doing that, but I just find that to be a little bit more difficult to come up with a run through than two races, 
two hours apart where you're going all out. That's a much more common way to think about meeting out your effort. And if you've been running a long time, which all these athletes have, high school, college, chances are you've done two hard efforts spread out by a little bit. That's the nature of track and field. It's much more uncommon to say, all right, there's five days. And on the first two days, you got to show up, get loose, run, but not that hard. And then on day four, you got to work a little bit hard, but then five and six, you're probably going to have to go to the well. But the reason I had it as in between is, yeah, they could have made this easier for her. But ultimately, I don't think this is going to be the limiting factor of a double. It's going to be more, as you mentioned, does she want to do it? And I also think the past five minutes of you talking about this was not ever once mentioned when they were creating the schedule. I think they just made the schedule not even thinking about Sydney McLaughlin. Well, as we said on Friday, I think because that idea came a little late, but I do think that is going to be, that's going to be in the discussion for 2024. And I think I'm thinking back to Allison Felix's days of wanting the schedule to work for her to do the double. And there was this talk and this thought process that, okay, if you want to have the schedule change for you, then you need to make sure you win this individual gold the year before at world championships. And then your case is going to be stronger. Now with her, with Sydney, that'd be crazy. Cause I feel as if the case has been made pretty clearly. It's like, Oh, is this a good athlete who's capable of a double or not? Let me just look at these YouTube clubs. Okay. But I think what, if she runs next year, if she just, my, my thinking is she's gonna run the four next year. She'll win the four. And then the goal for the, the double then will be on the table for 2024 when it's the Olympics. And then you have six nights of her running an individual event in addition to whatever she does with the relay. So I do think they will think about this for 2024 because I do think they want to showcase the top athletes and not make it easy for them, but just make it possible for them and entice them to do it. Yeah, I just think they don't even think about any of that stuff. I think they just look at it as like, do they actually think about well, the current fields when they're current, making a schedule? I don't think they do. Well, they, they, we have, people have talked about like Miller Weibo. Hey, can we request to change the schedule? Felix, can we request to change the schedule? Michael Johnson, can we request yeah, no, to change like, Those are about... all conversations that they have with the governing body. Now, when those conversations arise, how formal are the discussions? I don't know. But here's my, and this goes into something I don't like about it. For the women, they made the two four double possible, but not the men. And I, I think that's sort of being very reactionary to what's been going on because I think they thought, okay, Miller Weibo, two and four, like let's let's get her in both. And not to say that you have like all these strong candidates right now for the men to do the two and the four, but I just think. There's just a good a reason of, of seeing like a Michael Norman coming back in the two and the four than there is someone in the women's field. So just make both of them possible. All right. What are your three things you hate? Well, that was one of them. That was one of them. The men's, the men's two, four, I thought was just weird. Cause if you're gonna have the women's two, four, like, let's just keep it for the men's two, four. Uh, another thing the mixed gender four by four is still on the schedule. Thought yeah. that was an error. Just can we just Photoshop that out? Uh, it it wreaks havoc on everything because then you look at day day two, they start with the women's four hundred in the morning. But they would init- they would originally start that on day one if they could, but they don't want to do that because they want the people who are running the mixed four by four to be fresh. So it alters it take- a lot. Also, why is there a prelim for the mixed four by four? You think they should just take the best? Eight. How do you decide on the eight though? That's not Let as me if do people it. are running it in the regular. I'll send out an email. I'll email all the Ping coaches, and we'll find out who do you have on your team, and then I'll decide right, these are the best eight teams. Yeah. Ping pong balls. I mean, the same so way to decide who the top sixteen are. You just make it top eight instead. That's how. How. Yeah, I think they take a combination of PRs on that. Yeah, I'm – again, and how many people are actually doing it? How many of the people who are contenders for medals are actually doing it? Uh, this is that just was one us Americans before. pretending we hate the event because we can't find a way to freaking win the event as well. So. well no, at this it's point, how bad the event is. Ridiculous. It's so bad the Americans can't even win it. That's all. 
Yeah. Breezy in the chat says, I feel like I'm the only one who actually likes the mix four by four. Yeah. Listen, you probably are. It's track. I, I like track. Track is cool. People are running. It's fun. I got into the mix four by four last year because Felix was in it. And I said, the U S can't mess around. Otherwise they're going to blow an opportunity to get Allison Felix, another gold medal. And, and they did, and they did exactly what I said they were going to do. So, but in, my, my thing is, if you're going to ha have another relay, don't make it another 400, four by four, do something different with it, or just don't have it at all. It's fine. All right. My last thing I don't like. Why does World Athletics not want to see a thing mo in the four by four? What is the issue there? Oh, Why are we doing this again? again? Go down to day nine, if you can. Colt, Bruce or Colt, zoom in on day nine evening session. That's Sunday, the very last session of the entire meet there at the very bottom. And you will see women's 800 at, what's that, 2045. And then a little bit later, obviously, women's 4x4. Four four. Now, the U.S. doesn't need any help. I get it. Again, nine day meet. I know something's got to go on that last day, but it's just a tough break for a thing, though. She's clearly one of the U.S.'s best four by four runners, and she can't do it. Yeah, that does suck. Man, you just ruined my day. I didn't even realize that. Now you just brought that up because we know oh, she's not going to run it. Because now we see like the reality of that. She's not gonna feel the need to go crazy with the back doubling back it's not like it's the sec championships or ncaa's it's just <laughs> it, worlds so it is not it's an hour apart yeah that sucks not enough time us will be fine but i just i like to see the best people on the four by four yeah. if possible what if they did the All mixed right. four by four at the end would you be in favor yeah. of that? That would be good. Put a 4x4 four four in the beginning. Start it off. Like, no, who do you have? Do that. nah, 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 nah. That's, why, that's... why, why? Why can't you do that? Uh, a part of me just... It's like r turning right on the track. It just doesn't make Here's sense. Here's a question. I wouldn't be able to deal with it. Why is the 4x4 four four always the final event of track meets? Like, what's the well, origin it, of that? It, wa it wasn't, remember? When Bolt was there, they switched it and made the 4x1. And it was but terrible. in general, like maybe for like one off for both, they they switched it. But like in general, every track meet in high school, college, it ends with the four by four. You end it with the four by four. Yeah. Like, what's yeah. the origin of that? As my coach said, it all comes down to the four by four. Even though it usually didn't, because those were dual meets, and there was probably a hundred and fifty points separating the two teams by that point. I think. Just the whole idea of it being all hands on deck. I don't know the origin, but I, I think it works because it becomes an all hands on deck situation. Yeah. And like, what's you could probably name five very exciting four by fours that you've seen, correct? Yeah. Name a v equally exciting four by one. It's hard to do. Yeah, no. I'm going to name like one. And I, yeah, and I don't even think if it's just because it's one's last and one's whatever, the day before, the second to last day. Or in, in terms of high school meets and college meets, it's the beginning of the meet. I don't think it's that. I think there's just something about the construction of the relay, who competes on it, the way that you can have a big comeback. We can all remember a bunch of legendary 4 by 4s at any level. It's hard to recall, like, oh, these are my top six like 4 by ones of all time. Yeah, very true. Maybe someone has a list. Lincoln probably has a list. Yeah, if you're in the chat, give us your top six four by ones of all time. I mean, <laughs> only I'll, I'll remember. Well, I have two. Which one? What, what do you remember? Which ones? So, uh, 2000, the the LSU Houston at Texas Relays, the stare okay. down. Yeah. And then the other one was, I'm not sure if it was 2014 or 15, but World Relays. Yes. When yes, I remember this. USA yes. <laughs> stared down Bolt. 
That was good. Ryan Bailey. Did yeah, he do the Bailey. throat? Did you do the throat thing? Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, I think he did something like that. Like oh, cutting off man. the head yep. of, of Bolt. I mean, it didn't last long. He, 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 no. he, I mean, more power to him. He rode that high. He's like, yeah, that's right. I had like a, I held on to a 12 meter lead. Take that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 24 what? <laughs> I should have I should have responded to that with the the Bailey photo. Yeah, sure, I should have. Yeah. yeah. When Bolt uh, I'll remember US women in 2012 with Jetter pointing to the clock when they came across the line. I I remember that one. I don't remember all the back and forth of d- the different legs, but it happened so quickly. And I remember then they ran one by remember... themselves in lane 1 or something. Yeah. Remember that? 2016. Yes, I remember yeah. that too. Because Brazil, I think, collided with them in the in the prelims. Most of what you remember about a four by one is stuff going wrong. Because then you could think of seventeen Bolt's last race pulls up with a hamstring injury too, or U.S. versus Great Britain at you know when Harry Aikens Arite ran, ran over Doc Patton before the anchor leg. Like, that's the stuff that stands out. It's more of the blunders and the mishaps. Whereas four by four, especially at the non World Championship level, like you go to the college level. You can recall a bunch of them at the college, like USC chasing down Purdue, uh, Raven Rogers at home, clinching it for Oregon. That the indoor one between Phyllis Francis and Ashley Spencer when it was Texas versus Oregon. like it's just all of like all of them just pop up out of nowhere. US getting upset by was it Trinidad and Tobago? Was that 2015? Yep, it was 2015. Yeah, the dream team with. Mm-hmm. Felix and Mo and McLaughlin and Muhammad in, in Tokyo. It's a lot. Um, all in the game says Tortu pipping Great Britain at the line in Tokyo was memorable. Yeah, someone else agrees with him there. Yeah, it was a year of uh, year of Italy last year. Other folks saying London 2012. David says Athens 2004. My point is, though, <laughs> the 4x4 four four just seems... the. The four, but but then if I said what's your favorite four by four, we'd have this crazy debate because yeah, you can talk about like bowling at Texas State meet, you know where you yeah. split there's all sorts seconds. of crazy com- yeah the comebacks that are crazy. Well, what about Felix splitting forty seven seven and the U.S. losing? The U.S. losing yeah. that race. There's just there's so much more time for drama to happen in a four by four, and I do think it's fun that you incorporate a lot of different event groups. In it too, more so than you would in the, in the in the four by one. All right, anything else on the schedule? No, I mean, I'm not. I don't need. We don't need to talk about this anymore. It's it's August 29th, 2022. I'll worry about this on August 18th, 2023. That's the next time I'm going to care about this. Well. No, because we're going to be talking about doubles all the time, and people are going to say, I haven't looked at the schedule, and you're going to be like, yep, I got the schedule. So, people, gonna, Do you think this, the- this will be the most played podcast all year long because people will be like, all right, I need a refresh on the schedule? Let's listen to this no, podcast I think over the, and over again? The most played will be when we start doing the quiz, and then I create my mnemonic device so then people can remember. Okay. Like, yeah. well, 400 hurdles, 200, 800. I'm going to have some sort of song that goes along with it. It's going to be like Schoolhouse Rock. It's going to be tremendous. Okay, speaking of looking at a PDF for a long time, Diamond League. I got some Diamond League standings results takes. Do you want some of those? Yeah. I mean, there's still, so there's still some, one more I got Diamond some notes. League. For people, there's still one more Diamond League before the final, correct? So some of the finals are already set. Yeah. Right. Provided right. they all accept the invite. All right. So let me run through a couple things that jumped out to me. Let's start first with this men's 100 that we got up right now. Zoom in on that guy, Cole. Give me the top, let's say, top 11 there because I want to talk about the guy in 11th because the men's 100 has one more meet to go at Brussels. And it surprised me looking at this that Bracey, Marvin Bracey, in there in 11th only has seven points. He's only run one Diamond League. I feel like we've seen him a ton. But I guess early on in the season, he didn't run a bunch and hasn't run a lot of Diamond Leagues. Now, we know by looking at this result list here, we get that back up there, Colt. Um, Curly, for example, his season is done. So that bumps up at least one spot. The remaining guys, so Bromel, Prescott, Simbine, DeGrasse, Coleman, Blake, and King, those are the guys who are 
assured of a spot there in the top eight. Um, so maybe there'll be another couple scratches, but I feel as if Brace is a guy who could, if he got in there, could win. Yeah, 100%. I mean, he's just silver medalist. So He is. Not going out on a limb there. Yeah, but did you think he had more than seven points? I thought he had more than seven points. Um, no, because he was running all of his races at Continental Tours. All right. Well, you paid attention to that. Yeah, I paid I attention. I I've been watching track for at least a decade now. <laughs> all right. Let's keep going down here. Uh, not much in the two or the four. The eight. The eight could be important. There's two U.S. guys in a position to qualify in the eight. You want that wild card, right? <laughs> With how the men's eight is right now, if Hopple, oh yeah, this is an easy wild card to get too. That's a good point. Because guess who's not in there? Guess who's way far down? Keep scrolling career. if you can, Colt. Yeah, Emmanuel Career. It surprised me. He is way down there in 18th place with only five points. Now this final, only three people I think are locked into it. So there's one more meet in Brussels. So some stuff can change. But. So I guess career technically, if he got eight points, could yeah, he could move up for sure. Look at that. This is the point totals. 21, 20, 22, 21, 17, 14, 13, 10. And then in seven spots, Slomani Mula, eight, then eight, 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 seven, seven. There's so many people who basically ran you know, one diamond league or two diamond leagues and, and piled up eight points. Um, this is winnable, especially if career's not there. Yeah, um, I don't see any true favorite. Even if Career was in there, like I don't look yeah. at Career as a favorite in a Diamond League final because it, the eight hundred is weird. And yeah, oh, do you know would be great? Do you know would be hilarious? What if Jake Whiteman mm -hmm. does the Diamond League eight hundred final instead of the fifteen hundred, and then he gets, gets the, the buy in the eight hundred, and then he just never races. Inga Britson again for double the rest buy. of his career. <laughs> double buy. It's a double buy. That'll hey, appealing. What's his better chance at victory? Again, I don't blame him for any of these decisions. These make He's sense. a better shot of winning a in, Diamond League 8 than a 1500 yes. 8. Or yes. In a vacuum, this makes perfect sense. He didn't win in Euros, but he'd come back and win this thing. That stood out to me in the 800. Um, men's 400 hurdles. People have made the point, no Carson Warholm. But there's one meet left. I'm assuming he's not running Brussels because if he did run Brussels and he got eight points, that would put him just a couple spots out. And there's going to be some scratches, we know, because there are always are scratches. But eight points would put him in 10th position. So he would need a few scratches still to advance there, and that's even if he runs. But Alison Dos Santos... Um, the number one guy with 40 points. I These are more interesting to me when we, there is a a buy at stake. It's a high stakes buy. So Dos Santos being the big favorite when he already is the world champion, the stakes couldn't really be lower. I guess you're just looking yeah. for time on that one. But So I want, I want Warholm in there just to at least make this a, a cool race, but to get a rematch between him and him and Alison Dos Santos would be cool. It's not even a rematch, I mean, really, because Warhol was the, not not himself. From the U.S. side, like, where is there like a buy eligible, right? Because the one, no, two, no, because the the world champions hurdles, no, um, four, no, four, no. So it's really the eight, fifteen, five k, four hundred hurdles, right? And steeple. And. Yeah. Maybe show. 5K? Could Grant Fisher? No, no, he's not going to 5K. No. Well, I mean, go down to the 5K. 5K is interesting because 5K is wide open too. Oh, uh, let's make that real big, Colt, because there's a lot of names on this list. If and not only – he's in the mix, I think. He's down there in 13th, so he would need to run in, in Brussels. But you got a lot of people in a, in a big log jam there. For those for those qualifying spots, but is any one of those guys a runaway favorite right now? And Deku Minwanyu, we saw him pull the upset 
earlier in the year, and then you got Barrega, who wasn't out of this world of the World Championships. Aragawi, Tefera, Kip Career. Like, that's not that's not too far out of Grant Fisher's ability. So perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. That's what it is. We're at perhaps state. So perhaps. Perhaps. Okay. On the women's side of things, though. Cole, I have a tweet. I have a tweet for you to show when we talk about this women's hundred. So the 100 and the two, I think, are interesting. I, we don't know the status of Shelly and Fraser Price's health. Uh, if she's in there, obviously she's the big favorite. But if she's not, we kind of saw what happens to the rest of the field when, when she's not there. And I think it then really settles on you know, Tolu if she can recapture what she did in Monaco, but also Shrieka Jackson and Shrieka in, in, the, hundred, in the 200 as well, too. Shrika Jackson would be considered the top seed there. So I think that's big for both Americans because we saw Aaliyah Hobbs win the 100. So theoretically, we could have a buy for Aaliyah Hobbs if she could pull it off there. And then a two, Shrika Jackson is standing in the way of Gabby Thomas if she runs it, which could be another buy for the United States. So I think the presence of Shrika Jackson, in addition to the obvious one with, with Fraser Price, I think that's going to loom large in the in the women's one and two. Kevin, I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm thinking all about the person who's currently in ninth place. Eight people make the final. Currently in ninth is Shakari Richardson, who tweeted three days ago, it's time to get back on the track. I think there's a strong chance Shakari's going to run this next Diamond League. There's one more Diamond League women's hundred. If she runs that, she needs to get six points to pass Tunisia Terry. You know? So she needs to get finished top three. Mm-hmm. Maybe top two if someone else doesn't, you know, falls off or doesn't run. I mean, Hobbs, Asher Smith, and Terry, they probably are going to run this race. So they're all probably going to get maybe a point or two. So maybe she carries going to need to win it in order for her to get a spot on the track. It'll be interesting. If she finds a way, though, to get into that Diamond League final, because that would be the first time we actually get to... I mean, we saw her at pre, but that was not the same. Pre last year, she just wasn't coming off the suspension. Uh, But we'll see what she does. We know she's good. She just had a really bad USA weekend, but she has run fast times. She has a talent. And I want to see it. I want to see her give a full faith effort against the best in the world. I don't think she will win, but hey, I'm going to watch it. It'll be exciting. Do you think she will make it into the final? I don't know if she's going to run. Why do you think she's going to run? Because she said it's time to get back on the track. That could mean she's training again. That doesn't mean she's necessarily racing. It means racing. Come on. Why would she? Well, you say she wasn't practicing like for the past like two months? Yeah, maybe she was taking time off. I don't know, maybe she's doing stuff on the track. I think it's I'm, time to get back on the track as in the race track, not the training track. There's two different types of tracks. You're right. Yeah, I just want the start list. Race track. So, I mean, the race is on Friday, right? September 2nd, that's Friday? Yeah. You have that right? Yeah. Well, by Wednesday, we'll know. I think she'll we be She'll have the start list by Wednesday. Well, if she did, that well, would be. You want to bet $37? No, I do. I want to keep my thirty-seven dollars that you uh, that you owe me. Um, well, there are a bunch of other meets going on in Europe, so maybe there's another one that's going on. That Rever- uh, is it Roberto Continental Tour? Yeah, that's on. Is that tomorrow? It's uh, yeah, it's tomorrow. Do you have live on flow chat. one? I was trying to find it. I couldn't find it. It was in Italian. Did you recognize anybody's name in English? No, I couldn't find... I didn't know what start list meant in Italian. Well, hold on. Seriously? Yeah. There we go. Roveretto. Continental you looking tour. it up? This is, this I'm gonna, is very good I'm gonna, podcast I'm going to look it up. Us looking well, up the start list. Clearly, we should have done our research. 
there's got to be. I thought I thought you had it, but then when you said it's in Italian, that's just we got to be able to figure that out. I found I found the meat. I found the meat. They don't have a website. Okay, but you just keep, it's called the Palio Cittadia no della Quesadilla. No, it's not what that word is. I apologize. I said that name wrong. Okay, I found the website. We're walking through here. Is there, is there a translate button? Okay. And fence start list 2022. Oh, look, I found it. Okay. Oh, everything it says start list soon, start list soon, start list soon. The meets tomorrow. Still, oh, wait, here we still. go. Why don't they have the start list? It says the program is still being finalized. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know the start list, but there's going to be a hundred, a four hundred, and eight hundred. You know, all the all the good old fashioned track races. Mm-hmm. Well, There'll sucks. be an NFL game this Sunday. You'll see who's playing. That actually be a good idea for the NFL, and neither of the teams knew too, so they couldn't do any prep work. I kind of like that idea. I don't like it for track. It'd be sort of fun for the NFL. Just show up to the stadium. Who's there? You got to show this up in the, uh, just the NFL hat that that one guy wore. <laughs> Rob Lowe. Yeah, all the, the jerseys are just like one mono, monochrome. They're just one color. Just, just, you know, all, you're going to wear all white jerseys. That game of chess. And then, oh, my gosh, that's the Eagles. All right. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of things on, like, Instagram. Caster Semenya is running. I don't know what event, but she's running. Anthony says that she's on the start – Richardson's on the start list for Luzerne, which is on August 30th. Luzerne? Yeah, L-U-Z-E-R-N. It's not oh, that's a, tour, sweet, right? that, that's, that's a continental tour. Me, yeah. Switzerland. 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 That is a continental tour? Okay. I don't know. I got some, Tunisia Terry's running. I got some people who are Worth running. The- Tunisia Terry, Caster Semenya. Bunch of Italians. We're at the end of the year in terms of uh, in terms of schedules getting posted too. <laughs> if, ah, it'll be up when it's up. We'll figure it out. Meet starts in three hours. Uh, the only other race I, I had circled or Diamond League race was uh, the women's five with uh, women's five thousand. Alicia Monson there now the in sitting in second place after getting second to Nian Saba in Lausanne. And you look at that field, it's 10 deep. Obviously, you'd say, all right, Nian Saba deserves to be the favorite based on credentials. Hassan's going to be there. but And now Monson, everybody knows what she's capable of. But, hey, she's one of 10 who's in there. Maybe? Maybe a possibility? I mean, she lost by one one-hundredth of a second. Yo, if Alicia Monson gets a buy in the women's 5,000, the one event that the U.S. women have never been – like able to like crack you talk about they're good in the 15 they've even had some crazy chaotic luck in the 10k with you know yeah luck luck is the meaning you know what i mean like they found a way to get a medal Tara goucher emily enfeld different women yeah at the 10k but the 5k has been no one's touching that on the u.s women's side and now alicia monson she's ranked second in the diamond league standings going into the final that would be a hell of a story if she found a way to get a buy and I'm sure all the 15, 5K women in the U.S. are going to be huge Monson fans because they'll be like, thank you. We get four and not three in 2023. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. I mean, it's a possibility, right? It's not, it's not crazy. It gets tactical. I mean, she can close. It would be crazy if she won. Yeah, it, let me rephrase. It'd be crazy if she won, but any other person who just almost won a diamond league by one one uh, hundredth of a or lost it by one one hundredth of a second, you wouldn't say no shot. True, they're out of it. That's all. That's so. true. All right. Anything else? That's all I have on the standings that that stood out. Um, I, mean, I think a lot of there's going to be your typical huge number of scratches. Uh, like Norman's done. I saw he posted on Instagram. So the, the 400 is, is available. And we know about Curly. Uh, people in the chat said DeGrasse is done. So that would open up another spot in the 100. Uh, I know Marcel Jacobs was talking about trying to petition to get in the 100. 
but that's not how it works with the Diamond League Finals. So I do not expect to see him, uh, which we want to see. You want to see it, but at the same time, there's rules around who gets in yeah. and who doesn't. And you can't just start adding points to people's totals because you want to see the matchup. Waiting for you, Gordon. That was a Wait long ass pause. That was, long. that was good. That was good. I was looking at this uh, Michael Norman Instagram, right? He said that's all she wrote. Yeah. We all need to do wrote? a better job next year. We're going to keep track next year of people whose seasons are over when they say it's over because they do one post on Instagram and then you forget and then you see them in the standings. Oh, man, they're number one. What I thought was crazy. Mondo not number one in the pole vault. He's not? I'm just kidding. I'm just seeing if you're paying attention. <laughs> Is all oh my goodness. I think he, what has this pod come to? We're talking about random Diamond League standings and he didn't, he didn't compete schedules. in one of them. He's got 32 of the possible 40 points for Mondo. No, it's a great pod. It was great. Good job, Colt. You've been a rock. So what are we talking about? So Wednesday we'll probably react to the Italian uh Continental Tour, which is live on Flow Track tomorrow. Preview, final regular season diamond league and then is it diamond league on friday or is it on saturday friday correct yeah okay so friday we'll do a live reaction pod then so perfect thank you schedule gods for making um our podcast schedule kind of align with your track schedule this is good yeah all right anything else Flowtrack flow podcast at gmail.com. That's the email address. So we'll do some, uh, we do some guess my PR and some internet coach this week as well. Stay tuned for Gordon's cross country rankings and all these smaller meets that are happening during the week. We'll give us plenty to talk about on Wednesday. And then the, is it going to be, you said 3 p.m. on Friday again? Probably. I don't know exactly, but right after the meet. So check your local listings. They say on Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, I'm Kevin. He's Gordon. He's got an expensive new wardrobe. Um, and we'll talk to you guys on Wednesday. <laughs>